Chris the Bergeron Zone. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. So is that so? That's how is that how Jimmo started? By the way, who is Jimmo? I know oh, Sibelius. Sure. Sibelius is the is the woman right. who always seems to be apologizing for Obamacare on TV. <laughs> right. right. So who's who's so, Jimmo? So Mrs. Jimmo is a woman who lives in Vermont with her husband. She has mm -hmm. um, diabetes and it's it's pretty advanced, and she's had amputations um, of her lower limbs, and she really needs skilled care to to you know to help with her skin and to monitor her. So she's condition. still around. She's not just a legend. No, she's, still she's around. not. Mrs. She's, Jimmo she is, is a you know a real person, a real person. and you know yeah. uh, getting health care in Vermont thanks to. To the lawsuit, and uh, we filed the lawsuit with Vermont Legal Aid, so mm -hmm. um, they were our, our uh, co-counsel, and um, that's how we ended up in, in Vermont. In the district of Vermont. In, yeah. Yeah. in the Vermont district court, of Vermont. Federal mm -hmm. court, right. And, and, did this, and, and, the case, and in the case, you simply said that, what, Mrs. Jimmo deserved these services despite the fact that she wasn't... Well, the key would, is she needed skilled care. She needed, she skilled, needed care. skilled nursing, and she needed skilled therapy, and if you need either you know, nursing, uh, skilled nursing or skilled mm -hmm. therapy mm -hmm. that needs to be provided by a professional, then you are entitled to Medicare coverage. Mm -hmm. And uh, that they were violating the Medicare statute, that, that uh, the agency was violating the Medicare statute by denying coverage to Mrs. Jimmo and people in her situation. And uh, we had several organizational plaintiffs as mm -hmm. well, including the MS Society, for example, which had never... The Multiple Sclerosis Society. Exactly. Yeah. Um, was I the believe... Alzheimer's Association involved? Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. And um, at the MS Society, for example, had never been a plaintiff um, in a case before. And uh, after people from the center uh, spoke to them, they decided this, this issue meant so much to their constituency, to their members, um, that they wanted to take this step and, and be a part of the and, lawsuit. And, and that's great. And I, and I think one of the things that, that's been so fascinating to me about the case is I do a lot of work with a lot of folks that have Alzheimer's, and, and they, to me, are, have, have been su such a huge constituency that's mm -hmm. been missing from Medicare just because of the kind of, in some ways, the nature of their disease right. and the impact on, on this could be of this could be really huge. But so, so you ended up litigating. So did you end up going to trial? Did you have to? Do you, no, did you know, uh, Kathy Sebelius wasn't on the stand. No, no. no. Um, the, so what, the government, what happened? Well, what happened? The, the case was filed, uh, I believe, in 2011. January, mm -hmm. right? January of 2011. Um, and then um, later that year, what happened was the government filed a motion to dismiss. Um, that was argued um, with Judge Rice um, in the District of Vermont, and mm -hmm. that motion was largely denied. Mm -hmm. um, that's when then the settlement talks started with the I government, see. and that uh, those took uh, about a year mm -hmm. um, and resulted in a settlement agreement, mm -hmm. um, which then got approved by the court and is now being implemented. I see, but in the settlement agreement that occurred a, a while ago, that got that got approved by the court about a about, about a year, year ago, ago right? exactly. But the but the I think you were mentioning to me earlier the, the 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 agreement kind of makes it clear that what you're saying has been the law, was the law during that whole time. So it even affected people who have already who perhaps may have even been denied based on this plateau standard and all and all of that. That's yes. correct. And and so you've been trying. What 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 did the settlement agreement say in terms of how this thing was this 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 brand new standard was going to roll out? Because certainly, we we've, we've all met individuals and mm -hmm. even institutions who are not really aware of this yet. Right. right. So the center is is doing its its utmost to to um, tell people about the the settlement and yeah. the, and train people on our website, which is MedicareAdvocacy.org. We have self help packets. So if somebody wants to explain to the nursing, the the, the settlement covers uh, nursing home care, home health care, and also outpatient therapy. So those are the three um, you know settings where where Jimo applies. And so mm -hmm. we have uh, self help packets on our website if somebody wants to explain to their provider. You know why you know their care should be covered and why you know skilled care is covered even if you were you needed to maintain your condition or prevent further deterioration mm -hmm. um, so you know we've been working on that meanwhile part the settlement also said that CMS uh, while the statute and the regulations were good some and by the of way CMS that's the Center for Center, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services which is basically Medicare the government Med right. Medicare and Medicaid this one gigantic right. agency and, right. and incidentally kind of parenthetically one of the things that amazed me in getting involved in this was to realize that they don't actually run their own program. Right? They have they have contractors. Right. 
right. who, who what, by region, actually kind of administer all of this for them. Right. And is there one contractor that covers all of New, all of New England or this area, or um, it, are they all over the yeah. place? Well, I mean, right now, uh, for you know, the it's it's now national government services covers a lot of um, nursing home and uh, 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 home health care. I see. And then if you you know, there's you know, if you go up to different levels of appeal, right. Maximus is another company that does it. Yeah. But basically, the settlement told instruct CMS agreed in the settlement, yeah. uh, Medicare agreed mm -hmm. to change the manuals to update them to show that. You know, you don't, as long as you need skilled care, it doesn't matter if you're not going to be restored to your prior condition. To change the manuals. These are the, the Medicare, the, 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 right, the, the policies. guidelines that everybody, you know, all the providers follow, the Medicare contractors follow, the lawyers follow. Right. Um, and some of them needed to make clear that maintenance was, maintenance therapy or maintenance nursing was allowed. And so those have, were changed, even though in, in, in introducing the new guidance, CMS, Medicare says, uh, this is not a change, this is a clarification. And this is the way right. it should have been. And so those um, new, got that new guidance has been published and is effective in the manuals today, actually, January 7, 2014. Um, and meanwhile, as part of an educational campaign, uh, Medicare has been uh, educating the contractors and the judges and the providers um, through call, national calls and, and, mm -hmm. and different programs and so it should be easier now. At least now, when when uh, a provider calls a Medicare contractor and says, you know, this person needs coverage because uh, they need it to maintain their condition and to prevent deterioration, um, the contractor should know what that means. It sh they should have heard about Jimmo now, and they should know that it exists and it's in effect and it's, you know, going forward that this is the new standard. And this is the standard. Now, what what I'd like you to do is talk a little bit about if I am the poor patient, right? who is either getting, I shouldn't say the poor patient, if I am the patient who is getting services either from the home health agency, it might be a visiting nurses association or another home health agency, or if I'm in the nursing home and somebody, some uninformed person mm -hmm. uh, said to me, oh, sorry, your services, we're, we're, the, Medicare isn't covering you anymore. As of tomorrow, um, you, you are, you're off. Mm -hmm. What, what can I do other than just be, be mad? Do I, what, what, do I have an appeal right and how does that work? Yes. Yeah, so if you've been getting services either at home or in a nursing home yeah. or even an outpatient, you'll get what's called a notice. Mm -hmm. and, you know, the provider has to give you a notice saying, we think as a provider that Medicare is not going to cover you any anymore, and they have to tell you why they think Medicare is not going to cover you anymore. And they have to give you that notice in writing before yes, they stop. Before covering. they stop, and then you have there's there's two types of appeal, but the one that affects most people is yeah. you need to take that notice and call right away. There's a number on there for you to call the the, the contractor who handles that provider. Yeah. And in Massachusetts, it's Mass Pro is the mm -hmm. and, and is that the same contractor across all of Massachusetts? I believe so. Yes. Yeah, in, yeah. in Connecticut, is there just one like that that's going to? We we have yeah. Qualadyme for the most part. Is I ours. see. Yes, I see. So Matt, but but the phone number is going to be on there. Yeah. The name of the entity is going to be on there, and they need to call. They don't have to send anything in writing. They can literally just call. To start the appeal, all you need to do is call. As you call. Yes, um, but it was absolutely um, very helpful to have support from a medical person, a doctor, um, someone who's familiar with your situation, yeah. who can describe the need for skilled care. So as um, the improvement standard is hopefully now falling away, what yeah. becomes very important is to be able to document and describe the skilled care that you require. So just because um, they said you plateaued and that in and of itself is not a sufficient reason to deny you, you still do need to show that you um, require skilled care, that it's reasonable and necessary for yeah. you to receive the care from a um, skilled physical therapist or mm -hmm. a skilled nurse, um, that that would help you um, maintain your current functioning, for example, mm -hmm. or prevent deterioration in your functioning. Um, so that is something I think that providers may not have in their head as something that they're used to addressing, but yeah. it's something that as we go forward with implementing the settlement, we want to get providers used to documenting that. And the family, the patient and the patient's family, that's the question that they should be asking and should be getting documentation of if they are going to use an appeal process to say, Describe the need for skilled care here. Why does the person need skilled care as opposed yeah. to custodial care that could be done by a non-skilled personnel?